In our previous video, we began studying the water hammer phenomenon, which occurs in closed pipes during transient conditions. As we saw, it can happen during the closure of a valve, when the closure time is too small, and in pumped lines when a power failure occurs. We saw that when water flows in an installation like this, if the valve is closed instantaneously, the transient pressures or transient heads will start to form. We also said that if we close the valve more slowly, we can alleviate these transient pressures in a certain extension of the pipeline. But if we close the valve in a time greater than 2L over A, which is called the reflection time of the pipe, we can alleviate even more the transient pressures. In that case, we say that we have a slow closure situation. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is Marcus. I am a retired professor of hydraulics. Now, I'm a consultant engineer of many companies that deal with hydraulics applied to sanitation works. Okay, this is the initial condition. Here we can see the water flowing in steady state. Just to remember, U0 is the average water velocity in its steady flow condition, and A is the celerity of the transit pressure waves. Now, let's figure out what happens when we close the valve more slowly. We'll assume that the average velocity varies linearly with time. So, L over 3A seconds after the beginning of the closure operation, the wave front traveled L over 3 from the valve to the reservoir. Let's assume that the valve opening is now 90%. This will be the configuration of the piezometric line along the pipeline. The closure operation goes on, and here's what happens 2L over 3A seconds after the beginning of the closure operation. The wavefront travels 2L over 3 from the valve to the reservoir. Let's assume that the valve opening is now at 80%. This will be the configuration of the piezometric line along the pipeline. And it keeps going. And here's what happens L over A seconds after the beginning of the closure operation. The wavefront traveled L from the valve to the reservoir, and the wavefront hits the reservoir. The valve opening is now 70%. This will be the configuration of the piezometric line along the pipeline. From now on, the reservoir will begin reflecting back the waves towards the valve, as we will see. And here it goes. And here is what happens 4L over 3A seconds after the beginning of the closure operation. The valve opening is now at 60%. This will be the configuration of the piezometric line along the pipeline. Part of the pressures in the pipeline near the reservoir will be attenuated by the waves that were reflected and that are now traveling towards the valve. It occurred at one third of the length. The closure operation goes on, and here's what happens 5L over 3A seconds after the beginning of the closure operation. The valve opening is now at 50%. This will be the configuration of the piezometric line along the pipeline. Part of the pressures in the pipeline near the reservoir will be attenuated by the waves that were reflected and are now traveling towards the valve. It occurred in two-thirds of the length. And it keeps going, and here's what happens 2L over A seconds after the beginning of the closure operation. The valve opening is now at 40%. The pressures in the pipeline will be attenuated by the waves that were reflected by the reservoir along all the extension of the pipeline. From now on, the pressures will stop increasing in the pipeline. This is the critical situation for maximum pressures. As we can see, all the pressure waves sent by the valve will be aborted by the waves reflected by the reservoir. And this will happen until the valve is completely closed. In our case, the maximum pressure variation in the valve will be only three-fifths of the value that it would reach in the cases of instantaneous or quick closure, which would be equal to A u naught over G, according to Yukowski. We can find a formula for this value. Let Tc be the closure time, 
and t equals 2l over a be the reflection time. As we saw in the video quick closure, when tc equals t, we have delta h equals a u naught over g. Now, when tc is greater than t, delta h will be proportionally smaller. Let's see if the expression fits. If tc equals t, delta h will be a u naught over g, as it should be. If tc isn't equal to t, then we substitute the values and find that delta h will be equal to 2l u naught over g tc. This expression is known as Michaud's equation. And it fits to our case. As we saw, the closure time of the valve was 10l over 3a. According to Michaud, the pressure variation would be 2L u naught over G times 3A over 10L, or 3 fifths A u naught over G, which is the value that we found. Just to make it clear, if we close the valve in a time equal to the reflecting time of the pipe or smaller than it, the pressure variation in the valve will be equal to A u naught over G. And if we close the valve in a time greater than the reflecting time of the pipe, the pressure variation at the valve will be smaller than A u naught over G. If we assume that the valve closes linearly, the pressure variation at the mid-length will be equal to L u naught over G T C. In our next video, we'll begin to study what happens in a pumped line. See you there! Oh, and if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, comment, share and subscribe. Hit the bell so you can be notified of my next videos.